Well, now, it's the hallmark of a civilised society. That's how successive governments have described access to justice. No one should be denied it just because they can't afford it. Legal aid was one of the principal elements of what became known as the welfare state, established under the post-war Labour government. But now, nearly 70 years on, the coalition government wants to prune it back. They say too many cases are clogging up the courts. And for the past three months, the Lord Chancellor, Kenneth Clark, has been engrossed in a public consultation over his proposed cuts to the legal aid budget, part of a £2 billion savings programme over four years. Liz Copper has been examining the case for the prosecution and for the defence. Justice for all, irrespective of wealth or ability to pay. Legal aid, most of which is currently spent on criminal cases, aims to ensure everyone can defend their rights. Legal aid isn't just available for criminal trials, it's also been extended to family, immigration and asylum, welfare, housing, education and employment cases. Sue Rushton is relying on the wide scope of legal aid to help protect her son, so together they can continue to enjoy the peaceful surroundings of their home in Stoke-on-Trent. Simon Rushton has cerebral palsy and is bringing an action for clinical negligence against the hospital where he was born. We would never have been able to afford to bring the case um, because you're talking tens of thousands of pounds. Um, so it's very important that it's not taken away from us. Um, only the rich will be able to afford to go to court to take these cases up. And that's a view echoed by senior lawyers such as Chris Bright. He's led the response by barristers across the Midlands to the government's proposals. Lawyers aren't, aren't popular, but when people suffer that sort of accident and then want access to justice, they're going to be pulled up pretty short when suddenly they find there simply isn't the funding available to uh, even investigate what may well be a very good claim. First established after the Second World War, legal aid was a key component of the welfare state. In the 1950s, it was promoted as a means by which help was available for those of slender means. And by the 1970s, it had been further expanded. Many, many people up and down the countryside, shall I say the, pe the poor people, don't know that they really have rights about this at all. But the big idea was to let them know that here is a scheme whereby they can walk into a solicitor's office and say, A, have I got any rights, and B, what does it amount? Today, what defending the interests of the poor against wrongdoers amounts to is around £2.1 billion a year in legal aid spending. There's an acceptance by both the government and the Labour Party that legal aid budgets need to be cut. The arguments over how far and how fast. The government thinks it should only be available in cases where life or liberty is at stake. We do currently spend more than any country uh, in the world on legal aid. And after these proposals, we will still spend more than any country in the world on legal aid. Uh, this is a rationalisation. It's a redirecting of resource towards those who, who most need it. It's certainly not detracting from our strong belief and support for legal aid. The children were clearly still in distress. They were crying and screaming from within the property. The government wants to see less of this disputes being resolved in court. It wants to see more mediation. This is actually a training exercise for law students here at Staffordshire University. Ultimately, though, the government wants to see fewer practising lawyers. Effectively, it may only be the rich that can represent themselves and the poor will have to be left to fend for themselves. Cutting back on the amount of lawyers, essentially you could be curtailing justice in the society overall and which most people would say is not a good thing. It's a basic constitutional right that everyone's got a right to, to defend themselves. But if you, if you can't afford a lawyer, then you're not going to have defence. These plans represent the biggest shake-up of the legal aid system in half a century. The debate's over how to strike a balance between safeguarding public finances and securing access to justice. Liz Copper there in the witness box. Uh, and for more on the background to this, incidentally, you can go to my blog, bbc.co.uk slash Patrick Burns. Well, uh, sitting on the bench here with us today, John Hemming, the Liberal Democrat MP for Birmingham Yardley, and Rob Flello, the Labour MP for Stoke-on-Trent South, who is a shadow justice minister. 
John Hemming, is there not a danger in this that the law is no longer blind as between rich and poor, that you will be excluding, these proposals will exclude many people who have a justified claim to go to law, like Sue Rushton we I think there. one of the problems we already have is too many innocent people being jailed, too many children wrongly taken from families, too many secret prisoners held against their will, drugged to keep them quiet. And I don't think the current system works. There's no question about it that it needs to be changed. But I think we need to go further and look at models in other countries. For instance, the law centre model where you're you're not trying to fund individual cases. A lot of money is spent on some very, very high-profile cases, and perhaps we need to distribute it more fairly. The here and now, of course, is keeping cases out of court, and I gather mediation, you see, is very important, but that's only a partial solution. It sure. depends in which area you're looking. Um, in private family law, where parents split up, clearly what we should be trying to do with the system is to get people to work together. The problem with the government's family justice review is it only has people who make money out of the system. It doesn't have the users of the system. Rob Fellow, surely you have to accept that there is a problem here, that the courts are clogged up, and a lot of taxpayers' money is ending up in the pockets of the lawyers, as things stand. So we really do have to have a, a much more streamlined approach to this. Well, I don't think any legal aid lawyer is really sort of getting fat on, on the, uh, the fees that come down. And indeed, organisations like the CAB will tell you that you know, they get very, very good value for money. Well, your government tried to codify it with using the Carter Review, so Absolutely. you were aware of the problem. Yep, you know, so, so at least this government's trying to do something Well, except they're it. not, are they? What, what John's government are trying to do are not reform and improve. They're just slashing and burning. They are cutting justice for people who really need it. And John talks about people who uh, already don't get proper justice. This will get far worse. Is it right that you can take legal aid, for example, to contest a refusal to get a, an HGV license or you have your child is excluded from school? Some of these things seem, frankly, not justified draw on the public purse. Well, uh, if your child has been excluded from school unfairly and unlawfully, then actually if you have no access to, to justice to remedy that, but you know, we can always cite um, cases where it does seem a nonsense. But we're looking at situations, for example, in Stoke-on-Trent, where currently in the last year 730 people with really serious debt problems are no longer going to be able to get that help and support. John Hemming, your constituency offices are going to be absolutely inundated with people. You're closing Citizens Advice Bureau right, left and centre and advice, now it is. Advice is absolutely critical. My, my, my constituency office has got two people out of jail in the past because of the failure of the current system. We do not have proper access to justice in this country and a lot more needs to be done about it. But there needs to be a different attitude to it. The, the, the lawyers have got to accept preemptive orders for costs, for instance, so that cases don't go on and on costing massive amounts of money because it's it's a much more complex issue I think the government is coming part of way down the right track but I don't think in any way are we looking enough at the issue there are too many things going wrong and that's what's got to be sorted but John, out this isn't about this isn't about reform this is about cuts this is about I, taking away justice from people at the, the poorest levels of society the margins of society who really need and access to justice and think, that's why this is yeah, so wrong. That's why what we need to do is move more down developing the law central model that they use in other countries so that people have some access to advice at all levels and can escalate things through the process. Yeah. And better support for litigants in person is needed in, as well. Indeed, but, but then you've also got CABs who do a fantastic job and who tell me that you know, their funding will be cut to the point where they will be losing staff. Yep. Indeed, Stoke-on-Trent CAB may not even exist in the future because of these cuts. You're, you're right that there is a problem that needs to be dealt with. I have a meeting, okay. for instance, tomorrow to look at that particular problem. But we, we ent enter in a situation where your government pretty well bankrupted the country. And therefore, oh, we on, have to say... No, it, it's quite, quite it's straightforward. We almost had the a IMF come in. Uh, if you uh, if you'd continued with your policies, we don't have the IMF. Our level of debt was the lowest it's before... It's the deficit that matters, the second not the debt. And that means we have to cuts. save money. But it's a nonsense. But if this is about the legal aid... Deficit is the problem. It's a massive... It's yeah, but legal if that aid is about case, money. I, if that I would very much just, regret, Patrick, if that Money the, does not the, grow on trees. May I basically well, quickly say, if it were the debt, briefly. this would be a temporary it's measure. It's not a temporary measure. Well, this is a permanent cost. The deficit, and the amount of money... Final word with John Hemming very briefly. We need better access to justice. The system is failing badly at the moment. There are... The government needs to go further. This actually is not good enough. We really worse. do have to leave it there. My thanks to you both for being with us here today. Uh, just time for some of your thoughts. We've had a, an email from Rachel, who is a trainee solicitor in Stoke-on-Trent, Rob Fellow's city, and she says that she's extremely concerned about the proposed cuts settling 
uh, outside court is short-sighted, she says. An anonymous viewer says, uh, why didn't the Labour government, this is on building schools for the future, why didn't they keep them in good condition when they were in office? And uh, Tom Waring from Redditch said, why weren't the schools routinely maintained? I'll leave you a reminder that uh, you can watch our programme all over again on the iPlayer. You can keep in touch with us also on Twitter. But this is the point in the programme where we rejoin John Sopel.